And I thought to myself, why am I here? What am I doing here? And little did we know that God was going to break out in miracles and words of knowledge unlike anything we had ever seen before in our ministry. And so here was Teresa Stacy dying. She had everything you could imagine all in one body. Advanced diabetes with neuropathy, heart disease. 90% of her liver was dead. On top of all of that, she had been in a car accident and it began to liquefy her spine after the accident and she lost two inches of height as her spine shrunk. Her liver was dead, her kidneys were gone and the doctor, a good man, a Christian man, told her, go home, put your house in order, you've got two weeks. Two weeks. The meetings exploded and she tried to come to them. One day, my wife and I were in Clear Lake, drove by the Assembly of God Church at 3.30 in the afternoon and there were 200 people standing outside in a light rain for a seven o'clock service. I called the pastor and said, open the doors. T tried, as she's called, Teresa tried to get in, couldn't. Fire marshal wouldn't let him, no more. She dragged that pain racked body a second time to the meeting, only to be turned away again, even though she had come 45 minutes early. The third time, she came 90 minutes early and was one of the last people allowed in. And she sat in what would have been the aisle right there. I will never forget as long as I live. And it's good to see you, Ralph. God bless Ralph. The best there is. Somebody help me with that. The best. I looked at her. Now I'm going to put that story right over here and hang it in space. And I'm going to come over here to another one. When Paul the Apostle arrived in the city of Lystra, he was running for his life. They tried to kill him in the city he was in before. He escaped to Lystra. And when he got there, he got there just in advance of one of the highest pagan rituals of the year in the polytheistic Greek world. They were going to worship Jupiter. They had these massive carts covered with fruit. Everyone in the city was about to be shut down because this was their high celebration. And Paul gets it in his head to preach right then. So he stands up and he begins to preach the gospel and we know this because it was a medical doctor that wrote the story in the 14th chapter of Acts. And, and Luke is saying, this man heard Paul speaking in verse 8. Heard him speaking and he had never walked crippled from his mother's womb. So he sat there with no Christian influence. He has no idea what he's listening to, the gospel of Christ. Now I'm going to make my first point tonight. When you sit in an audience and a man or a woman preaches the gospel, they are sowing seed in the audience. I'm throwing it out now. It's going over here where there's a man with heart disease and God already told me. It's going out over here where there's a woman that for the last two months has been unable to sleep. Hardly at all. Out of dread and fear with a, a, a mysterious stomach ailment that no one can diagnose for you. You're over there. You say, are these people really here? When I was sitting there and all of you stood up, the power of God came on me so strong I had to sit down. 
And God said, you better speak everything I give you tonight. And I'm going to tell you, God is mad. You say, well, Mara, we just sang about how sweet he was all night. But he's mad. He's tired of our children dying from overdoses of drugs. He's tired of perversion. He's tired of us confusing them. It's time for a miracle. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to run around this room if I have to. I'm going to try it again. It's time for a miracle. In Acts 14, it said that Paul saw him. And here is what the word is. Intensely observed him. How do I know about this heart condition, about this insomnia and intestinal problem? Because I've been watching, I've been looking, I've been standing here. The anointing does something very strange to your senses. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is on me. I want you to know that I've never felt stronger and I've never felt weaker. I've never felt more confident. I've never felt more helpless. I've been, I have never been more aware that I am in the presence of a miracle service where God is going to do things that we'll be talking about if the Lord tarries 30 years from now. Let's let the Holy Spirit flow tonight. Paul observed him intently. And the next phrase is so astonishing that it solved a mystery for me that I have lived with for years, decades, a mystery. I didn't like the gift that I had received from the Lord. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like knowing people's condition in an audience and having to walk off the stage or go down to an aisle and tell somebody, stand up, this is what's going on in your life. Do you think I enjoyed that? Is anyone imagine what it feels like before a meeting to know that you have to expect that because you told people they were going to be healed? No one but my wife understands that I die a thousand deaths before an event like this. I can't come in here and talk you into being healed. I can't come in here and cajole and manipulate. It either is God or nothing is going to happen. So then it became clear. What Paul's talking about is he looked out at a man. There was a crowd that he was preaching to, but one of them did like what you see in the Hollywood movies. The, the camera just brought him right toward him. And it said that he perceived that he had received faith to be healed. Perception. All of a sudden I'll be standing in an audience like this and I'll look at someone and then I can't look away. I keep staring at them. Soon their story starts to download into me. But I won't speak immediately because I found that my father is merciful and kind. He knows I'm human. I know that people have blurted out things before they were ready. But I wait. And it said that Paul looked at him and perceived that he had received faith to be healed. You have no idea how revolutionary all that was to me. I said, what? What does that mean? I had to know. Because I had been experiencing things that I didn't understand. And so now we're back in Clear Lake. And there is Teresa. 14 years she's had one more disease that I didn't even mention. Peripheral neuropathy that made her skin so filled with pain that even a bed sheet could hurt her. 
14 years, she had slept in a separate room from her husband because of the pain in her body. Dead liver, dead kidneys, diabetes, neuropathy, all through her body, peripheral nerve damage of the worst kind. And she's sitting in that chair, feeling the agony. Every second is a torment to her to be in that meeting. The floor of the church had indoor, outdoor carpeting about a quarter inch thin over a slab of cement. And the Lord said, if you walk down there, I will be glorified. Now look at me. I'm not in this for the money. I'm not in this for the influence. I'm not in this for fun. I'm in this because my passion is to glorify God. How many of you are like that? Tell me right there. How many of your passion is to glorify God? To God be the glory. So I walked down there. Pastor Greg, I walked down there. <laughs> my wife was there. Some that may remember it that were there. It's been about seven years. I walked down off that stage, went down about eight rows, and I said to the woman, I said, would you please stand? And I looked in her husband's eyes, and I could see in him this tremendous hope, but he was already crying. Jim Stacy. And Jim is standing there, watching his wife stand up. And you want to know when it hit me like boulders falling on me is when I watched what she went through just trying to stand up. Man, I thought this better be God. And she got up and I began to describe her condition. Is it, it is true, isn't it, that your kidneys are failing? that your spine is deteriorating, that you are dying from a liver disease, that they've given you only a few days to live. Is it true? Before she could answer me, the most shocking and horrifying thing I could imagine happened. This woman who couldn't even allow herself to feel bed sheets without pain, suddenly fell on a cement floor. And I thought she was dead. I already saw myself behind bars. <laughs> she hit that floor so hard. Nobody caught her. We didn't have time for the catcher or the power cloth. She laid out on the floor. And her husband is sobbing. Now here is what. Teresa said, I felt like I fell into a feather bed. You know, I'm, I might be having too much fun up here. Is anybody enjoying this besides me? She fell, bounced off the cement. You could hear that sickening thud. And she said, your voice sounded like it was coming at me from the end of a tunnel. She was five foot seven when she hit the floor. When she stood back up, she was five foot nine. Her doctor took all the tests on her blood, her liver, took those tests, sent it down to San Francisco. They examined it all before and after and sent word back, all your machines are broken. <laughs> Said the only way that there could be a liver this pure is an unborn child's liver in the fetus, in the womb. Somebody help me give God the glory. To God be the glory.
So we had her testify. I'll never forget it. She brought a lawn bag filled with capsules. I never saw so many capsules. She said, this is what I had to take every day to survive. Then she held up an empty baggie in clear plastic and said, this is what I take now. She said, nothing. I have been healed by the power of God.